Josie and I'm a librarian with Deschutes Public Library. Today we are going to make salt crystals on leaves and explore super saturated solutions, evaporation, and crystallization. So it's going to be super fun. You're going to need a couple of things for today's project. You are going to need a pot to boil water or you can use a microwave safe bowl to, to do the uh, water boiling in the microwave. You are going to need construction paper and scissors, salt, I just have plain old Morton's, and a shallow dish, pie plate, cookie sheet, something with rims on the side so it can hold the water. Now you don't have to have these things, but you can also use a measuring cup. I have a single cup here and measuring spoons, a tablespoon will be super useful for you today. Now I'm going to talk you through the project a little bit and then we'll actually do the project. So the first thing you're going to need are your scissors and your construction paper so you can cut out the shape of a leaf. Now to do that you can trace around a cookie cutter that's leaf shaped, you can trace around an actual leaf or a picture of a leaf, or you can just cut it. I like to take my piece of construction paper, fold it in half, and then freehand cut it out. So when I do that, it looks the same on both sides, and that is called bilateral symmetry. So most leaves, no, I don't want to say that, many leaves are bilaterally symmetrical, which means they are exactly the same on both sides of the leaf. So if I do that and I unfold it, this side and this side are the same. That's bilateral symmetry. And a lot of leaves are like that. So that's why I like to fold it in half and cut it out, but you can do it any way you want to do it. Next, you're gonna take your leaf and put it on your dish and set it aside. You want it in a safe place where you won't have to move it again and you want it sort of close to the stove so that you can be safe when you move your boiling water later on in the process. The next step is going to be boiling the water. So when you have cold water, all the water molecules are very close together. But when you boil the water, they move apart and start wiggling around a whole bunch. This moving around and wiggling makes room for the salt to go between the water molecules. So you have the salt molecules in between the water molecules. When we put the salt into the boiling water, it dissolves into the water for a long time until you put too much salt in and there's no more room for the salt between the water molecules. So when it's full of salt, when the water is full of salt, this is a super saturated solution. That means it's so full of salt, you can't put any more salt in. So as you're pouring the salt into your boiling water, you will notice that it kind of disappears. That means it's dissolving into the water. But when it doesn't disappear anymore, that means your water is super saturated and you can't put any more in. That's when you should stop putting salt into the water. We are using one cup of water today and you'll have to eyeball it but probably about three tablespoons of salt so of course put the salt in until it can't hold any more and then that's when you'll stop putting the salt in so the first step is carefully boiling about a cup of water once you have that cup of water boiling you are going to very carefully take the salt just plain old salt and dump some of it in. Water will fizzle a little bit more. You're gonna stir it around and look, see, you can't even tell there's salt in there. That's because our solution is saturated with salt and the salt is between the water molecules. Awesome, right? So while the water is still hot, very carefully pour it on your leaf. Now you don't need to fill the whole plate, just pour it enough that the leaf gets wet. Now you still can't see the salt, but as it cools down, watch for the crystals to start to form. Once you've poured the water carefully onto your pie tin or plate, 
watch as the salt falls back out of the supersaturated solution. Eventually, it will form salt crystals on your leaf. I poured too much of our supersaturated solution onto my first plate, so I carefully pulled my leaf out of the water and put it on a second plate so that the evaporation could happen quicker. Soon, I'll see the salt crystals forming quite clearly. So there you have it. You've made salt crystals. If your leaf is still a little wet, wait for it to dry. That'll be evaporation, the water leaving the leaf. Um, and if you have salt crystals on your leaf, and maybe if you have a magnifying glass at home, take a look at the salt crystals close up so you can see what they really look like. Compare the salt crystals on the leaf to regular salt that wasn't used in the experiment. Do they look any different? Now that you have salt crystals on your leaf, you could go ahead and tie a string to it or tape it to a window just so you have a decoration. Or maybe you're all done with it for today and you've made salt crystals and that's cool enough. So thank you for joining me today to learn about saturated solutions, evaporation, and crystallization. I'm Josie from Deschutes Public Library and I had a great time. Bye!